all right what's going on you guys we finally got our first cold day here in Tennessee took till October 12th to do it but we finally are running in heat mode for the first time and I'm gonna go over something that I sort of touched on in another video um, but now that we're actually in heat we can actually you know hook up and actually do this test so you can see what we're talking about but it is one commonly overlooked problem in the winter time when you get that call the homeowner says the unit just seems like it's blowing cold air sometimes and you go out you check this thing and you just know it's going to be low on refrigerant or you know you're going to come out here and the coal's frozen a block of ice but you get out here and that's not the case refrigerant charge is fine defrost is working properly there's no ice on the coal uh, you go inside you know you you throw the thermostat into emergency heat or you jump out your W at the indoor unit and you check your heaters, all the sequencers are closing, heaters are on, everything's good. You can't find any explanation for it other than, you know, the homeowner's crazy. They just don't understand how a heat pump works. If I had a dime for every time I heard that. But what could be going on is, and you'd be surprised how many times you'll find this out in the field if you actually start looking for it. I was just amazed when I come across this for the first time and I started checking this and you know sure enough I will find it four or five times a year where there is no connection from the indoor unit to the outdoor unit for electric heat. For some reason white never got hooked up out here you know like maybe it's just wrapped around with all the the spare unused wires uh maybe it was hooked up out here to white but then the other guy that hooked the stuff up on the indoor unit used black so you know there's no connection from the inside to the outside unit so where that comes into play is during the defrost cycle because when we go into defrost and we switch into air conditioning if we produce 24 volts on our white wire from the board, we have to have a connection back to the indoor unit to turn on the electric heaters, right? So if there isn't a connection because of a wire not hooked up or the wrong wires hooked up, whatever the case may be, if we're not turning on those heaters during defrost, then you damn right the homeowner's feeling some cold air. Every hour or every 30 minutes, whenever that board goes into defrost, it's just blowing straight air conditioned air in the house. And if you think about it, the whole hour this unit sat out here running and heating the house is completely wasted because when it's 30 degrees outside and you put that thing in the defrost with no electric heat, that cold AC air blowing in there is gonna cool the house back down to where once we do kick out a defrost, instead of satisfying the thermostat relatively quickly you know right after we kick out now the heat's just going to come back on and start running again and it's going to run and run and run then it's going to do the same thing an hour later it's going to go into defrost no electric heat it's going to cool the house back down kick out a defrost and just start running and running and running so it's a never-ending process but the easiest way for us to check and verify this is just to turn up the thermostat inside so we make sure we energize W2, and if there's truly a connection coming out here and we go from our common to our white terminal, then we will have 24 volts, all right? It's not doing anything, it's just sitting out here doing nothing. It's gonna go all the way through our white wire up to our board, and right there's where it stops. It's just sitting there doing nothing. So we've now verified that yes, we are hooked up, we do have a connection inside, so when we do go into defrost and the board is now producing the 24 volts, to inside, we know that we're turning on electric heaters. So that's something to kind of check out. You know, if you get one of those nuisance calls and like I said, you go out there, you can't really find anything wrong, they call back a week or two later, same thing, or maybe another guy gets a call and he goes out there and he's like, man, I couldn't find anything wrong with it either. That is something to check. So just crank up the thermostat, you know, to 80 degrees, make sure you energize W2, and then come out here and check your common and 24 volts coming into the outdoor unit. 
And if you don't have 24 volts, something's wrong. Something's not hooked up. You don't have a connection from the inside to the outdoor unit. Now, another possible thing that could happen, I've never seen this happen. I've never caught it happen. Let's say something crazy is going on inside the defrost board and the defrost board did not produce 24 volts to W. What we'll do, I'll change our wires around here a little bit. We'll get set up just to test that and verify that the defrost board is producing 24 volts. So give me just a second. Uh, let me get hooked up here. I'll be right back. All right. So now what we've done here, I've just disconnected the white wire coming off of the defrost board. So it's not hooked up. All right, we're still hooked up over here. Now we should still have 24 volts because the indoor unit is sending it to our W1 terminal right here. So you look, we do still have 24 volts. But now if we come over here and go to the W wire coming off of the defrost board. Okay, so now we're hooked up there. We got common and 24. Now you see we have nothing. All right, but when we put this board into defrost, now the board should produce 24 volts and send it to the inside. So let me see if I'm cold enough to go into defrost. We're only in the 50s out here. I'm not sure if it'll go or not. Might have to jump out a sensor or something, but we'll give it a try. I'm just shorting out the test pins there probably is not cold enough and I'll have to jump out my defrost sensor all right so my defrost sensor is my two brown wires right here and let me go ahead and get a jumper put it on there real quick we'll simulate it being cold out here and the sensors closed i ain't got time to turn off the fan and wait for it to freeze up naturally so we'll jump out the defrost sensor and then we'll go ahead and hit the test pins again get it in defrost and we'll see if the board is making 24 volts all right be right back all right so now we're on there if you can see right in between those two wires i don't know if it'll focus but you see df and of course that stands for defrost sensor. One of those terminals has 24 volts on it all the time. It goes down and through the defrost sensor, which is mounted over here by our TXV. And whenever that sensor gets cold enough and closes, it sends 24 volts back up the other wire to the other side of the board. Everything will engage after an hour this particular unit is set to go every hour here in Tennessee an hour seems to work good for you know higher efficiency units like uh, the Linux we're working on you know if I've got an old Goodman or you know a really old unit a Janitrol or something I usually set those to 30 minutes because they just work better thawing out every 30 minutes all right so now we're gonna come down here we're gonna use our little screwdriver we're gonna short out our test pins we should now go into defrost. Might take it a second. Sometimes it seems like forever. Some of these boards were a little more particular than others. You had to kind of hold it for a while. I feel like the Jeopardy music should be playing. All right. So now we're in defrost. The compressor is grumbling. And we are now shifted over. All right. So now we're in AC mode. The fan shut off. Everything's doing like it should. And if this board has produced 24 volts, then we should have it right here. And we do. So now 24 volts is coming from the board through this wire and we now know that the board is producing 24 volts during the defrost cycle and that's going to go inside because we also verified 
we have our connections properly made over here to the indoor unit and now we can eliminate that as being a problem that we're not having electric heat on during the defrost cycle so I pull my jumpers off that's telling the defrost board that we are now warmed up on our sensor down there and it can kick out a defrost and it did so we verify that the defrost cycle is working properly and we also know that we are not going to have that issue of not having any heaters on during defrost so that's just a little something i wanted to go over with you guys something to check like i said you might be surprised just how many units you will find that on out in the field especially some of these older units just back in the day maybe it was friday or whatever and the guy that was hooking the low voltage up just didn't get the connections made and some people honestly think that's how the heat pump is supposed to work i don't know how many times and you know this is true you've heard homeowners say well i, I just thought that's how a heat pump worked you know we just thought that was part of it it's got to blow cold air sometimes and it's just amazing how many people don't understand proper operation of a heat pump and buddy let me tell you what you talk about being a homeowner's best friend and their hero you fix a problem like that and then you come back a year later in winter time to do another checkup or whatever and they will hug you coming through the door they will say lord son i don't know what you did to that unit but it has worked better than it's ever worked before this winter we we've never felt heat like that coming out of this unit our, our power bills and everything are lower um, and I know some of you, you know, might want to fight me on that saying, hey, if you're not turning on electric heat during defrost, how's that going to make their power bills higher? Well, like I said, it's that never ending process of that unit just running virtually all the time. When it's cold outside, all the heat you just put in the house is now gone after just a few minutes of being in defrost with that cold AC blowing in there. It, it's not going to take any time to lower the temperature in the house so as soon as you kick back out of defrost the unit goes back to running instead of satisfying and turning off for a while now it just goes right back to running again and it's just a never-ending process of all this additional run time that the unit should not have so anyway guys that's just a little something i wanted to go over with you something to keep an eye out for this winter as always i appreciate you guys watching and i will catch you on the next one see you